Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this card which I'm calling a faux bow. I saw a video made by Taffy Craft who demonstrated how to do this. I will put a link in to her video in the box below because hers looks quite different from mine because I've only used like a couple of patterns. Um, Taffy has used a few patterns like that pattern is a different from one that one okay so all the big ones one pattern that and then there was that pattern and I think if I remember rightly that was a pattern at the back there as well um so if you enjoy using more than just one or two patterns like I do then you'd see some great ideas from Taffy um now my this is my um prototype card and as you can see it will fit into the same box that I demonstrated last week and we sell these as a packet of 10. Um, okay so this is my prototype and funnily enough this has turned out to be my favourite. Um, I'm not sure why, I think possibly because the bows are really very definite curls whereas this one is less obvious and I also made this one as well. This was more like taffies because she did the oval in the middle whereas I've done the circles um, and what else can I say about this I'm going to do for my video the circle so if you check out taffies video you'll see how that bit is done okay because it is a bit different from this so I am oh before I start do you remember last week's card was the book card the easel card and I showed you how to demonstrate uh, how to decorate one of our boxes and I said that I would try posting one of mine and seeing how it survives going through the mail okay so this is it it's been through the post and I can't tell you how pleased I am with it the outside here has got it a little bit um, bent but not very much at all to get it through our post as a large letter I had to move this round to the side because that bow made it too thick and it would have had to gone as a parcel and obviously that's more expensive but I'm really pleased with the card inside it's absolutely no damage to that whatsoever okay no damage to the box I just really really so pleased with that which is why I'm happy to recommend that these cards will go in the box as well. Okay, so I am going to try something different today, but I might not actually go ahead with it because what I'm ha hoping to do is to lay the things down before I actually glue them. And therefore, once I've laid them down, if I don't like the look of them, then I'm going to go back to the original. And basically what it is, is Taffy's card, what she did was this band across here hers came off the edge just a little bit either side but she had fishtailed the ends so it's more like the tails you get on a bow so what I thought I'm going to do on my one is I'm going to do this design with the circle but I'm going to instead of having that there I'm going to cut it in half and have fishtail it and have it as like two tails coming down of the bow not sure whether it's going to work but stick with me and you'll find out <laughs> at the same time I find out so the cardstock that I'm going to be using I'm using basic white and I, as always I will give you the inches for A4 cardstock users in the box below I will include the metric measurements for this one and I will also put the inches for letter size cardstock users it will be in the box below and it will be marked NA which stands for North America so that I'm including Canada with the US so to start off with the card base and this is a regular card base with the regular middle layer and top layer this measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches scored and folded at four and one eighth inches and I have to say I've seen quite a few videos recently where people are just folding this card without scoring it and I really don't recommend that at all because you don't get such a clean cut fold not a cut but clean crisp fold as you do if you scored it first and then you need two pieces of Highland Heather for your middle layer 
and these measure three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches and then you need two pieces of the basic white which measure three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches I've done that just to save us a little bit of time you will also need four ovals like that and four ovals like that now I have used the retired stitched shapes ovals and I've used sizes two and three um, and if you've got these retired ones then that's great I don't think they'll be available um, at all even if they get um, I can't imagine seeing them in clearance rack either uh, which is a shame because they were brilliant. I'm very disappointed that they retired. But if you don't have them, I have measured the sizes of these. So you can use your own ovals. And the size 2, this one, it measures 1 and 3 eighths of an inch across and 2 and a quarter inches down. And the larger one measures 1 and 7 eighths inches across and 2 and 3 quarter inches down. Okay, so that's those. I've done all my cutting. I've made my other three pieces up um, because there's a bit of work that involves in it. And if I just do one, um, you've only got one time. So if I left all four of them, you'd have four times to do it. And that would not be very uh, entertaining for you. Now, these are the bits. That is if I'm going to use the banner. And if I'm going to do the fishtails, I'm going to use those. So I'll give you the measurements of whatever it is I decide to use. Um, so let's do stamping and die cutting first. Now, for my background here, I have used the absolutely stunning stitched greenery embossing die. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I've also done it on that little piece. Um, I think I've done it on all of those pieces as well. I'll explain to you when I get to that bit. Um, but I'm going to emboss that. And I need a little bit of stamping to do. I'm assuming that my tails will work. Which means I need the Happy Birthday stamp from Blossoms in Bloom. Okay, so I have... Oh, by the way, you will need scraps in... Whisper uh, Basic White and also in Highland Heather. So I'm just going to... I thought I got myself a piece of scrap paper. No, nope, I didn't. I can still see it standing out there. But I'm going to stamp that in Highland Heather. I don't know if I got myself the little scrap or not. But I can do that. I'm just going to move it a little bit along like this because I'm going to die cut it. Okay, so that's going to be die cut when I'm using that. And I think, no, I need a circle as well in Highland. Where's my pink one? I need a circle like that. Now, as you can see, that has been embossed with the embossing die there. So what I've done is... I have taken a piece, it was a bit bigger than this, and I have die cut just a scrap. So when I want to do something like this, which is a circle, which again is the stitch shape circles, and I am using, I'm not sure whether I'm using number one or number two. In fact, I'll have to put on my list what the measurements of all these are for future reference. Okay, so that is what I'm using. Did that leak? Where did that come from? Oh, it must have been on my... Yes, it was. I can see it's on my blog. So, um, let me just measure this while I'm thinking about it. Because I'll probably forget to put it under the video. So the diameter of this is... One and a quarter inches. So... When I want to cut that, what I will do is I will just cut a piece of my decorated piece. Now the reason I'm saying just cut off a piece that you need 
is because when you run that through that's going to get flattened and it doesn't look quite so nice but when you run this through that won't get flattened because it's protected as the roller goes over the die okay so that is something else I want to die cut this I'm using the stitched rectangle dies these are still current um, and I'm using the smallest slim die let's move that there and this measures half an inch that way I know that and two and a half inches this way which means I should have a piece of Highland Heather which measures five and five eighths, that's right, by two and five eighths. I remember now I went to do this but I forgot to uh, measure how much I needed. Right, so that's three pieces that I need to die cut. Not going to need that again. Let me just bring this up. I have to say that this is my second take on this video. The first one I did, I did the um, these little bits my way, which was using glue dots. And for my first two cards, it worked brilliantly. But in the video, the glue dots just did not want to work at all. And I was just not happy with it. I gave up and I'm recording it again now. Right now, this die has somewhat uh, warped. I did have some, oh, here it is. So I did have some washi tape here. So let me bring this one towards me so that I can see it better. Something about the embossing die is it really did warp my plates big time. But since then I have been using the plates and alternating them. They have both been top, they have both been bottom, they have both been facing this way and I flipped them over as well and it has straightened them out really well. They're not perfect, but they are nowhere near as bad as they were. Oh, let's put that one up there for the time being. Okay. Oh, I know why I didn't do that strip, because if that goes on my... If I do do the tails for the bow, then I think I would probably leave that as white. So that's... That. Let's put that one on there. And then I need the embossing die here. And this is absolutely fabulous, it really is. Okay, so that's it. If you can treat yourself to this, please do. It's lovely. And one of the great things about it is it actually measures six inches by four and three quarter inches. So it doesn't matter whether you use A4 cardstock. So that's a middle layer for me. See, it's plenty of room. It does the whole sheet. But if you don't feel inclined to treat yourself to it, instead of doing this, you can just use an embossing folder. Okay, so I'm just putting on that on there. Because this fits over really well, it doesn't matter that I can't see what's going on underneath. I can just judge. And it doesn't have to be straight either. So I just put that on there, that on there. And then crank it through. cuts right the way through but not enough to make your piece of cardstock disintegrate. Right, I need my paper piercer to 
lift that off so that was all I needed wasn't it so let me move all my guys out of the way tweezers first okay so that's what that looks like don't you agree that's absolutely stunning I'm sure you do right so this needs to be going onto here that's my stamping sheet and Tombow You can use your favourite adhesive on this bit, but I do recommend that you get some glue all over. I mean, I don't mean literally all over, but just randomly like that, because it is an embossed sheet. This is just in case I drop it. good yep so now I'm going to adhere it on here might as well do this one now might not I have to say that out of all my cards that I've made I haven't decided what I want to do to decorate the inside you know I normally do some kind of an image but there isn't anything that is particularly relevant I suppose I did find because you probably noticed I've used my little bumblebee trinkets on all of my cards um, and I have got a die to die cut and that's on the iconic dies but it's quite big in comparison to the bees on the front but I thought if I did gold like my the trinkets maybe it would tie the two together I don't know when I've got a bit of time I might I cut one to see, do it in gold and see what it looks like. See if it looks, um, that it blends in. I mean, it's obviously not going to match. Let me lift that up, see if it's straight. Yeah, I think so. Okay, now normally what I would do is I would adhere that there and that's about one and a half inches up, I think. Um, I think this was a good one, wasn't it? Um, ruler. Yes, one and a half inches up. But I'm going to leave it because I want to see how the other one works. Now, as I say, I've already done the others of these just to save a bit of time. And I am using tearing tape for this so you need to have one piece on the front and one piece on the back on both of them doesn't matter whether you do bottom here top there bottom here bottom there whatever it doesn't matter as long as you've got one on the front one on the back and obviously you're only going to have a very small piece here but what I aim to do is if you do this too high, you're going to finish up with a very, very small rounded bit. So what I do is, as I put that on there, I just make sure I cover the stitch lines under there. And as you can see, I get a very small piece of tear and tape there, but that's okay. As I say, it doesn't matter whether you go one top, one bottom, as long as you've got one on each side. Okay, so that's that one. I tend to do mine behind each other. No particular reason. 
right, do the same for there, take it so that it just about covers up the stitched lines there. Okay, so that's that. Just make sure that's nice and firmly down. Now, before I do anything, I do give these a little bit of a curl. And I, with my bone folder, I just do one that side, one that side, one side, and one side. Now, when I'm folding these, what I do, I start with the inside piece of tear and tape, take off the backing, and then to help me, I use one of my Stampin' Right markers. So I can put that there. As I go over, I line up that curve with that curve, hopefully not so that I can't see any of the underneath design. And then once I'm happy that's in position, then I'll give that a gentle squeeze. Okay, and because this is round here, I haven't got to worry about this folding. But just good squeeze, that's adhered down, and I've got a nice round bit for my bow. And then for this one, obviously the Stampin' Right marker isn't big enough, so I'm using one of these, which is one of Stamping Up's spritzers. And let's take the uh, backing off, that would help, wouldn't it? Okay, so pop that round there. If you don't have one of the spritzers, then use anything that you have that will be the right size. Okay, so again, I can squeeze that as much as I like, and this isn't getting damaged. Now, to put these together, on this one, face that down, that's a big one. On the little one, you've only got one piece left, so you need to take that off. Turn that round. Now you're going to have to work out which is the easiest way for you to do this. What I have found is if I hold that one like that, and then when I bring this one up, I hold it here and with my index finger. And what I'm aiming to do is to make sure that that line the back there is parallel to this one. I don't want it wonky. And that curve fits into that curve there. Okay, so hold it with the index finger and the thumb. Make sure you've got your sticky bit facing down, otherwise this is never going to work. Okay, doesn't matter which one you grab hold of first. If the thumb is holding two, and that is holding one, and then use this hand to guide this into place. Okay, so I'm matching up the curve first on both of the ovals. When I think that's about right, then I have a look at this, make sure that I'm happy that those are straight, and then when I am happy, I squeeze them down. Now, if you're worried about squeezing these closed, you could put one of these in, while you're doing it, but I really don't think it would work if you tried to. I've done it with this one in there to protect this because it was the smallest. Right, so we've got those now. Let's get rid of that little bit of rubbish. Now, ah, oh, right, there's my card. So, as I say, normally I would put that on there, and then normally what I would do is with the circle, I remember what I found really easy to do. I have it here, a half inch punch, and with a scrap of paper. It's just, I don't want to cut into a big piece that I've got on my desk, so I'm just going to find a thin strip. Okay, so I'm going to take that. So that's going to be my guide. In fact, I know what I could do. Right, 
I'm going to use both. This piece measures one and a half inches by three and three quarter inches and I'm going to put it on here about an inch and a half up. Now I've got to do that higher haven't I? I'm going to do it an inch and a half down from the top. So I'm just lining up here so I know that. Can you? Yes you can. So that is that line there is in the middle. I judged it from down the bottom here. So to be um, I've got pencil. So to be one and a quarter inches down, that has got to be one, two, three, four, five, six. One and a half inches, I mean, not one and a quarter. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that line there. So I'm going to put glue on here and line it up across there. And then that leaves me enough room down here to put the tails if it works. If it doesn't work, then I've got room for my sentiment. So let's hope this works. Now this I'm putting straight onto my top layer. If you've used an embossing folder, um, you will need to put glue absolutely all over it because you will have bumps on your embossing. Let's of course you use the debossed side, which a lot of designs look just as nice on the reverse as they do on the front. Okay, ruler, yes, brilliant, yes, okay. Now by doing it like this, I'm going to line this up again. Okay, so I'm still in the middle. Now this little half inch circle, I am going to glue right in the middle there. As you know, I do tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. Okay, so I'm lining up straight through there, about in the center. Okay, center there. Right, okay, so that's going to be my guide, and my guide is going to be so that I can fit these around. Put it around that way, okay. So then what I'm hoping to happen is I'm hoping to be able to put these down like tails. All right, so let's see if this is going to work. Now for these, I am going to be putting this in the center so I don't want them to be too tight to each other so I am aiming to make that side straight with that side that side straight with that side and I want to, them all to have the same distance from that dot that circle okay you see that yeah that's good in fact Yep, that's quite good for me actually, I can see that quite well, but they need to be separated a bit. Yeah, I'm happy to go with that. So, taking one at a time, remove your tear and tape, remove the cover to the tear and tape. And again, if you feel happier, you can put one of your supports through these. Okay, so let's get that back again. Fortunately, because it's rounded, you do have a bit of um, time to play with it. Okay, bring it down a bit. And in a bit. Yeah, that looks good. So now, without allowing it to move too much, press that down. Okay. And then do the same with these others. I'm going to do the one opposite first. Okay. 
as you can see the exposed tear and tape doesn't actually grip at the moment which is good okay so that still looks about right methinks so without moving just press that bit down and then these two sure they're parallel to each other. That's going to come in a bit. Right, we do this one first. So that one we'd already exposed, didn't we? If you find it difficult getting in here, hold your bow in place and then just get something that you can use to push it down with. Okay, and then let's do the last one. Let's turn the card around again. Go straight to that one. Yep, that looks good. So let's hold that one in place. And squash it down. There we go. Okay, so that, there we go. So that fits in there really quite nicely. Now what I did with mine was I put some, a bit of support underneath here. Okay, these are just four circles I found in my leftover bag if you like and I'm just going to stick them all together so this has got a bit of thickness to it you don't have to do this bit if you don't want to um, and that one as you can see was in embossed with some snowflakes in fact, they're all three different aren't they three same size okay I see a little bit of white under there but I'm not going to get upset about that now to pop it inside here I'm going to use dimensionals and I'm going to use the big ones. I don't think I used any others apart from the one big centre one, did I? Oh, I did, yeah, I did. Okay. But only singles. So I take one big one. Put that in the centre, which seems to have moved a bit. That doesn't matter, I'm not worrying. Hmm. I think I must have used little ones just on the outside. I'm not sure why. But as long as you leave enough room so that when you put this down, there's room for the big one to go in the middle there. There we go. If you don't like the circle bit, if you prefer to do the oval, um, please check out Taffy. Right. There we go. Yes, I decided that I did, would do this with the first one because I wasn't quite, I hadn't got my 
thing back from the post, the one last week's card. So I wasn't quite sure what was going to be happening with that. It actually came in um, just before I'd started the videoing. Okay, so that's that. That looks nice. I think so. So will this work? If it does work, can I cover up that bit there? So what I'm going to try first of all is I'm using this again is a retired punch. If you don't have this one, you can use this, which is a current. This is the tailored tag. Okay, so you can still do your fish tail by using that bit there. I'm just going to put that in there. Now I don't know how long I need for this, so I'm starting off with a piece that is four inches long. I know that by using this punch you do lose. Will you undo that? That's it, that'll make life easier. So if I start off, if I know where I've started off with, then I can measure it as I go to decide you do lose quite a chunk there okay so this now finishes up at uh, say it's three and three quarters let's try another one Now what do you think about that? I think that looks quite nice, don't you? And then my plan would be then, would be to have the happy birthday plopped across there. Oh yeah, I like that. Hope you do too. Um, so how much do I need to take off? I'm going to have to do this a little bit at a time, aren't I? I think I'll start off with about half an inch. In fact, no, it's got to be about that much, isn't it? It's about three quarters of an inch. Okay. Let's try three quarters of an inch. Let's get my trimmer up. Mm, that's what I need to cut off. So three quarters of an inch is there. Keep these little bits so I know exactly how much of the length I've cut off. So that was another three quarters. In fact, that's got to be an inch, isn't it? If that was three quarters, quarter, yeah, okay. Now, let's try this one. Now, it still needs to be a bit smaller. I'm going to take off a quarter of an inch. When you're doing a job like this, obviously it's better to cut off smaller bits to start off with because you can always cut another bit off, but you'll never be able to stick it back on again. So that's a quarter of an inch. You may decide to do these slightly different lengths actually. In fact, I might. I mean, we all know that one of the most difficult things with card making is to tie decent bows. Okay, so there's that one. And then there's that one. Do you think maybe they should be a bit thinner? Oops, that's too high. Um... What are you shouting at me? Thinner? Okay, so what I'm going to do then, I want that a bit thinner, rather than waste what I've done, because none of us like waste. So what I'm going to do is, that's quarter of an inch, isn't it? So that must be one eighth. Yes, yeah, so let's do it slowly. Uh, 
Um, no, let's do it this side. Let's check off one eighth. And when you're cutting, try not to go straight towards a point. This one's not too bad because you are going on the side of it, but if you ever need to cut and your blade is going straight towards, like if it was going straight up there, do you cut so it comes downwards? Because as your blade goes up, you can knock that. What do you think? Better? I think so. Let's take an eighth off this side. Eighth off this side, so I've got to remember I've taken a quarter off altogether. So my piece would have started off at one and a quarter inches wide. that's gone inside their bow. I think that's about the right size, don't you? I do. Right, I'm going to stick with that. Now, do I want to pop that up on dimensionals or not? How easy would it be to get them under here? It would tilt that up, wouldn't it? Um, I don't know. I'm going to curl that so at least it's going up a bit. And maybe just put a dimensional under that bit. Okay, let's glue this in first. And I'm not going to glue it all solid. I'm just going to do, say, about half an inch down here. about half an inch. I'm going to slide it in. Cut up that white. Yes, that's okay. That's all covered. And then same game with this one. See what it would look like with just a little dimensional under there. Yep, okay, I'm going for it. In fact, I'm going to put them on the two corners as well. Okay, so just go in a little way. Oh, don't you just love it when a plan comes together? And just put that one in. Slide it underneath so it can't be seen. That's one. Two. Okay, so it's one under the centre, one under this one, one under this one. Okay, so that's good. That is really good. I'm happy with that. I hope you think it's good too. So let me just have a little bit of a tidy up here. Now this one, does it still look alright? I think so. Put it down a little bit. Yeah. Definitely not up there. No. Okay. It's going down here. I'm pleased. I am really pleased. So that should fit on there beautifully. Okay. 
Anybody else have trouble with these dimensional covers? There's one person who I know gets these off brilliantly and that's Lisa Curcio. I don't know if you've ever watched her videos. She's great. She does, um, when she uses her, she uses her um, take your pick and she does, uses this and she just sticks it right in and lifts it straight off. I've tried it so many times and I get myself in such a pickle. Right, here we go. Oh, there's one of those here, look. Is that straight before I push it down? Yep, that's good. Okay. So, just to finish off, I need a bumblebee. Okay, so what I do is I use my glue dots to start with. Let's put that underneath his body. And then I'm going to put him in there. And... Um, A little bit of glue. And he can go on top. Do we need another one somewhere? No, I don't think so. Don't you? Are you sure? Really sure about this? Yep, I think I'll stick to one. So there we go, that's today's project. And I have to say, I am exceptionally pleased with that, really. Yep, I am. Um, that was my favourite, this one. But I think that's just taken over, really. So I hope you like it, I hope you give it a try. There's my blue one. Um, now that I've done that using and tape which I did with that one I'm not sure why this one's got still really nice big curls and that one's quite flat another thing if you want to do like this the stripes what you need to do is if you cut yourself a piece of your designer series paper cut it about two inches if you're using the size dies that I've set two inches and then make sure all your dies stand upright that way you'll have your lines always going in the right direction. Okay, so that was, they were all going down, as you can see. All right, they're different positions as they go around, but that's fine. You won't want to see them all going that way. That would look a bit odd. Um, likewise with that one. But I found it more difficult to get these straight. So can you see that? That's not really very straight. It's just one or two of them. That was so easy though. But there you go. Um, many thanks for joining me today. Oh, I've got one over here as well. I'll leave that one as the top because that's the one that I'm really pleased with. Um, in, the in the box below, I will leave the measurements for A4 cardstock users in inches and centimetres and letter size cardstock users in inches. I'll also list out all the products that I've used for this card and I will put a link for each product that goes straight to my shop. If you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator that you work for, with, if you choose to put an order through me, first of all, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Um, please remember to put the hostess code on your order before you check out. And then when I send you happy mail at the beginning of next month, which is a handmade thank you gift and a handmade thank you card, both made by me, um, and the thank you card is unused and it's with an envelope so that you're free to use it yourself, I would also send you a free product if you um, use that code. And also for my customers during July 21, I am also going to be sending some blank card um, card blanks they'll be scored but not folded and there'll be at least 10 I don't know how many yet because I still got to cut more of them and um, I'm 
it will also depends on how many customers I have during the month as well um, but that would be an extra bonus for you so lots of goodies to come with you and also anybody who places an order with me that is either more than 45 pounds or more than 60 euros excluding delivery I'll also be sending you the create with us international bundle PDF which at this month is going to be featuring uh, ink expressions in ink um, so that will be 15 projects and it will be free for you if you live outside of the area to which um, I can normally sell stamping up products I can still sell you the PDF because I'm not selling uh, they're not um, stamping up products that I'm selling it's a PDF so more details are on my blog if you'd like to find out more about that if you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one please click on the subscribe button down there in the bottom right hand corner and also click on the notification on the bell so that you get notifications many thanks for joining me today I look forward to seeing you next time in the meantime please take care stay safe and happy crafting cheerio